Anyway, Paul, I wanted to talk with you tonight about uh, Gnosticism because okay. uh, so much today of the world is covered with religion. And in religion, there's a word that is used for people who involve themselves in churches and synagogues and mosques. Uh, the word for all people going to houses of worship are referred to, generally speaking, as believers. I remember going to Christian churches when I was a kid, and, and people would ask me, oh, oh, you're a believer, are you? And how long have you been a believer? Uh, the word is believer, and it always struck me as strange why Christians and, and others are called believers because when they go to their churches or synagogues, they're referred to as believers. And uh, and I don't like that word in relation to r religion. I don't want to believe anything. I'd like to know the truth. If there is such a thing, I'd like to know the real story. I don't want to believe and I get that idea from the government we live under. The uh, the U.S. is not interested in believing anything. The U.S. has FBI, CIA, NSA, and God knows about 50 more secret societies and secret organizations in the government uh, for one purpose only, not to believe what's going on, but to damn well know what's going on. And so they don't care to believe you're all right. They're going to find out, tapping your lines and doing all the research on you. So they don't want to believe. They want to know. Well, the same thing with me. I don't want to believe anything. I want to know for sure. Well, the only way you're going to know is to take the time, and if you don't do it, you're not ever going to get to anywhere. Take the time to read and study and go back into the ancient world and read where all of these ideas and belief systems have come from, uh, you know, who started these different beliefs and different churches and religions. That's the kind of information that Paul has at the bookstore in San Diego. It is filled with brilliant and beautiful and incredibly important books on the origins of belief systems of this world. And, uh, my goodness, there's all kinds of stuff on UFOs and aliens and churches and, and cults in the Middle East and ancient history. Uh, just an incredible array of wisdom and knowledge. So I just wanted everyone to know that this is a very important bookstore in San Diego, The Book Tree. So, Paul, uh, <clears throat> in relation to the subject Gnosticism, <clears throat> Gnostic simply means in Greek, if I'm not mistaken, simply means to know, to know something, which is a little different than Christianity is to believe something. Uh, can you, and I know that you, Paul, have uh, been uh, studying Gnosticism for many, many years. I haven't. I'm just aware of the general idea. Maybe you could tell the people uh, some of the interesting background of the Gnostic belief, the Gnostic system of, uh, of theology and, and philosophy. Gnosticism, what is it? Well, there's, there's two different levels in any religious belief system, and um, any religion will have these, these, these two levels, which is, you know, first and foremost, um, those who are believers, as you mentioned before. And then there's a very deeper level, a very deep spiritual level, and and, and it's it kind of reflects the very essence of your of yourself or your soul. And a lot of people are, um, you know, they turn very fundamentalist because they've had these beliefs pounded into them, pounded into their uh, mindset for years and years and years, and they really believe strongly in in what they. Um, you know what they've been told and so um at the same time you have at some point you have the ability to break through the simply believing certain things and experience something for instance a gnostic believes that instead of being told what to believe you can experience god for yourself because you have that connection to god within you so um you know, but if you approach a, a person who hasn't had these kind of breakthroughs yet, then they will simply tell you, "Don't bother, don't bother me with facts. I've got my beliefs." 
the fact of the matter is that you have a deeper uh, part of you that goes beyond simply, you know, repeating things, uh, you know, that you've been told. So, um, you know, one of the one of the big secrets about Gnosticism is that um, what, what we've had is that Gnosticism, you know, the birth of it actually came about around the time of Jesus. You know, there's there's certain um, facets of it that actually uh, existed before the time of Jesus because there was always that ability within us to know these things on a deep spiritual level. But, um, you know, uh, I think the greatest value of Jesus' teachings was that he claimed to know God directly and that we could do the same. I mean, the greatest ally Jesus had was Gnosis. It was not the church. There was no church when Jesus was alive. But there was a gnosis or a knowing which he had and he shared through parables and different forms of teaching. So basically, you know, they, they tell you, oh, Gnosticism, it's a, you know, this, they were heretics, stay away from them. Well, Jesus was the first Gnostic there ever was. So, you know, it's how do you, you know, and that's the big secret that they don't want you to know. Jesus was the, was the father of all this stuff. So, yeah, um, and, uh, and the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. uh was uh you know he wrote like i don't know close to uh one half of the new testament is uh are the writings of the apostle paul and uh paul was a gnostic he was not uh, a, a a christian in the truest sense of the word mm -hmm. he never knew he never knew uh anything especially he didn't know the person jesus if there was a person named Jesus, but he didn't know any person named Jesus personally. Uh, and all of his terms that the Apostle Paul uh, put into his writings in the New Testament, all of them come directly out of the Gnostic tradition. And so it was as if the Apostle Paul, or the one called Saul of Tarsus, was just telling you, and he even said that a couple of times in the Scriptures. I remember one Scripture where the Apostle Paul said, whether it is God or the angels or the great spirit speaking through me, or maybe it's just me, I don't know. But here's what I believe. <clears throat> there is a perfect example of Gnosticism uh, where you know the Apostle Paul is saying, I don't know if it's God speaking through me or if it's a great spirit that's inspiring me. I don't know what it is, but here's what, I, here's what I'm telling you. Well, that's Gnosticism. And so... Um, it's basically the difference between believing something or knowing it in your gut that you're right, knowing something. You don't have to be uh, explained to and and uh, and uh, you know and shown how to understand it. Your gut tells you, "I know." I don't need to have somebody tell me something is true. <clears throat> so, just knowing, well, in Greek, is called gnosticism, to know something. And the other way I get to know anything is by studying all the great authors and all the great uh, people of the ancient world and what they wrote and what their beliefs were. <clears throat> and after a while, you get to where you've got a fairly good idea about what's going on. You may not know all the details, but I think I have a fairly good understanding now of the Gnostic tradition as opposed to the Christian, Judeo, and uh, Jewish and, uh, and, and the, uh, Islamic beliefs, because these are all what we call belief systems. <clears throat> yeah. They don't so, know, they just believe. Yeah. And so, you know, Jesus had said that we could be like him, and the church actually doesn't want you to be like him because they are the intermediary. And if everybody can be like Jesus, you got a bunch of people who are able to experience God directly. Well, what, well, what do you need the church for? You know, their job is out the window. So, um, you know, they, the great thing about this is that, you know, we have sort of like a divine power or divine spark. The Gnostics believed that we are, in fact, beings of light and um, that we have come from another place into this world. And, you know, there's a, there's a thing, there's, there's a parable that they, that they, um, that they teach. It's called the hymn of the pearl, or also known as the hymn of the robe of glory. And it's, it's basically a reflection of us coming into the world, but it talks about how 
this young man is sent on a mission, and he's going to the land of Egypt, and he's going to come down, and his mission is to find a pearl that is guarded by a dragon and to bring it back home. But once he gets down into the land of Egypt, which is actually this earth, he forgets what he's there for. And we're all running around not knowing, you know, uh, in, in large part, why we're here, who we are. And, he's, and so in this parable, he's down there, and, you know, after a time, he gets an eagle comes down and, and, you know, reminds him of what he's there for. And he wakes up. And, you know, those who are enlightened as beings of light, they do wake up. And that's what happens when you wake up and you become enlightened. You realize, wait a minute, I'm... I'm I'm not from here, and so uh, you do. So after that, you're you're aware of the work that you have to do. We're spiritual beings. We're here to do some spiritual things. We're here to learn who we are. We're here to help spread um, um, kindness and other things like that. And so um, he wakes up, and actually, by doing this kind of spiritual work, instead of just accepting a savior into your heart, you actually do some work. In the, in the way that Jesus would have done or some other um, divine person. Um, and then you're able to go back to your uh, the place where you are, and when you arrive there, you, the robe of glory is now bequested upon you, and, and it is said that you have a twin in this other world, which has grown with your growth in this world which is one of the reasons why you come down, because we're down here in, on this earth, which is a very low uh, material vibration compared to the spirit world. And so we have the opposites here, light and dark, night and day. We've got good and evil. We can work with this stuff down here. And as we do, we are able to progress. And then there's another part of us in this other world that is watching us, and people say that we have guardian angels or we have a higher self. Well, yes, we do. That's because we're here working, uh, you know, in part for our higher growth. And once we go back there and we we able to go back into this other realm, then it all makes sense why we've come down here, what we're here for, and all that stuff. Now, this is something that the Gnostics teach, it's not something you'll find in the church. The Gnostics were actually the mystics of the early Christian church, and the church wanted to be the, the mouthpiece for that. And they didn't want you to be experiencing this growth for yourself because they were the intermediary. They wanted control of you, and they needed you to fight their wars for them or do whatever and collect your taxes, whatever they needed from you at the time. But from your own personal, deep, spiritual point of view and growth, we're here for a reason. And the Gnostics were able to beautifully talk about these things, and, and some of the older Gnostic texts have been since been rediscovered. We're starting now, you know, centuries later to figure all this out. And so I think we've outgrown some of our religions whereby, you know, the, the, the God of the Bible is a, a very uh, despotic and, and, and mean character whereby the Gnostics believed in the divine feminine. And the divine feminine gave balance to uh, the entire spiritual outlook of things. And without the divine feminine, you've got a a mean and and, and nasty God instead. I mean, we became a mean and nasty culture and a mean and nasty world. And the Gnostics can provide balance. And as we learn about how to treat others and include everyone, we're also growing in that spiritual way. So once we go back to this other realm, because we all end up back there, then We've re- then we've accomplished something. So that's kind of what the whole Gnostic thing is in a nutshell. Yeah, and, and I can see why the churches would not want you reading this kind of uh, what we could call free thought uh, literature. In other words, uh, just read educational uh, documentary, uh, you know, go to encyclopedias and reference works and read about the world you live in and go to, uh, and if you can, go to different countries and see how the people live and understand a very important part of your religious life. It depends on where you were born. I mean, if you happen to have been born in, in Africa, you would have an African outlook on theology and religion of the culture you were born into. If you happen by chance to have been born in China, then you would have 
<clears throat> an Oriental or Chinese view of uh, spiritual, uh, you know, spiritual questions and concepts and ideas. Unless you were born in America or in Canada, and you would have, you know, uh, your viewpoint. So this is why people don't realize where where, where you were born. Uh, has a lot to do with who you are and what you believe. It doesn't mean you're right, because if you're the one that has the real truth, then that means the rest of the earth is wrong, and you are right. And then when you look at your life and the decisions you make, <laughs> and if you're the only one on the earth who is right, then we're in trouble, because uh, humans are continually making mistakes. So the bottom line is, Nobody's right if, if everybody else is wrong. And so <clears throat> that's the, the, the last thing I remember, uh, in relation to this subject I, 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 I found that I thought it was interesting is to explain the difference between theology and mythology. Theology is, go, goes, goes back to the Greek word theo, theo or T-H-E-O. Or T H E O uh, is Theo, which is God in Greek, and so the study is ology, and so the study of God or the subject of God is called theology. Uh, while there is another uh, school of thought called mythology, and I have always said that the difference between theology and mythology is really very simple. It's between Whatever it is that you, wherever you were born and whatever particular religion or belief system you have, that you can call uh, theology. That's the study of God. And since you are the world's foremost intellectual, brilliant mind, whatever it is that you per personally believe to be true has to be the real truth. So therefore, anything you teach or anything you believe in our teaching is called theology or the worship of God. While your neighbor who lives down the street and works with you, he has a different belief system. So therefore, his belief system is what you call mythology. It's a story. The word myth simply means a story. Mm -hmm. And so he's got a story that he believes, and obviously it's just a story. It has no basis in fact whatsoever, no matter who he is, no matter what race, creed, or color, no matter what he believes, it's a mythology. It's all nonsense. Why? Because you've got the truth. You have the real truth. Mm -hmm. So you've got the, uh, you got the uh, theology, and he has a mythology. That's how you tell the difference. You have the whole truth, and everybody else in the world can go to hell because nobody knows anything except you. And so, you know, that's this is why today we have the the uh, the frustration and the anger and the bitterness and all of the uh, all of the uh, lower uh, you know ideas of mankind, religion, philosophy, occultism. Because it seems as though the whole entire earth is caught up in the same problem. That no matter where you are born and you, and accepting into your life that culture and that belief system, then you grow up and find out other people don't believe that way at all. And before you know it, there's an argument and that argument leads to fighting and that fighting leads to war. And so that's why the world is in the shape it's in today, because people believe things, but very few people are studious enough to know. Go back to an encyclopedia or reference work and do some homework and find out where things come from, what the words mean. Now you are a Gnostic, one who knows as opposed to being someone who believes so that's the, you know, this is what I wanted people to understand. And there's a lot more we could talk about in relation to Gnosticism. You, Paul, have uh, been looking at the subject for far more years than I have. Uh, what were some of the experiences you've had with other great Gnostics? Uh, and I know I've had some experiences with them, but some of the things you've learned from great Gnostic teachers. Well, I, um, for a number of years back in the, uh, 
in the 90s, I would go to Stefan Heller's uh, Ecclesia Gnostica Church in Los Angeles. And I believe that uh, Dr. Heller was the first to open a Gnostic church in North America. And um, I would go and listen to him speak every Friday night and for a number of years, and it's very inspiring. And the reason why I would go to him is because it gave me an understanding for the things that I've experienced myself. And, you know, back, I went through sort of a, back in the early 1980s, kind of like a born again phase. And, but then I experienced some, an amazing out of body type journey into another realm. And I was shown things and I just had this, you know, and it was a direct experience of, of some godly energy. And it was the most incredible life changing thing that I'd ever, that had ever happened to me. So I went and approached some churches and some people who, you know, I thought could give me some answers as to what is going on here because this was, you know, just the most life-changing thing that had ever happened to me. And I had gotten either dead silence or, well, you're going to have to join our church first before I can explain anything to you about that, you know. And and so, um, and then others would just seemed like they were afraid to even talk about it or they just didn't know. So I realized at that point that, you know, I had had a direct experience, and I, I didn't know that, that you called it Gnosticism at the time. I just I didn't know what it was called, but I just knew that it, this is powerful stuff. So it was only a few years later, like, you know, a couple years later that I moved to California, because this happened in, uh, in Massachusetts, and I moved to California, and I discovered um, that there was a church that, you know, it, it talked about direct experiences and, and this, you know, whole th- everything made sense to me now through the, the work and explanations of, of Dr. Heller, Dr. Stefan Heller, and it's H-O-E-L-L-E-R. He's, he's written some great books on, on the subject as far as the whole history of it and an understanding of it. And um, it's written a really good um, overview of Gnosticism in general. And... Um, so he's one of them, and then uh, that inspired me to. I actually have since written uh, a workbook called, you know, Life's Biggest Questions Workbook, where you can put in answers to all of these direct experiences that you've had and what life means to you. So it's all written down in one place. I first started writing this thing as a way for me to share all of these incredible experiences that I've had in my life, and then I suddenly realized, wait a minute. What's more important than the, than the person themselves that's reading this? So I made it into a workbook, and my answers are still in the back of the book. But this is a workbook for people that want to really understand and put together, and maybe in a, you know, almost in like a journal form, but answer these in, these these questions about the what what life really means, and it's it's a way for you to figure stuff out, but also to bring stuff out, and um, so. That's that you know that's something that you can learn from yourself is my point. You know you can yes. go and you can listen to these other teachers and things and you can be inspired. But when when you have a uh, when there's a way for you to learn from your deeper self, I mean there's no there's there's nothing more powerful than that. And I had it happen to me from some other realm that I went to, and then also you know learning how to share that and try to understand it and to help others do the same. Well, you know, when I went to Dr. Heller's uh, church also, uh, and I was amazed at how much uh, I, I didn't know when I first went there. Because if you've never been to a, uh, Dr. Heller's uh, church, what was it called again? Ecclesia Gnostica. And uh, he's on the web. He's on the web, and you could go to... Uh, uh, you know the videos on the web, and put up his name, and uh, and listen to his lectures, and you will see what I'm talking about. Because when you go there, <clears throat> it's a very uh, spiritual presence there. It's a very respectful, quiet, and honorable presence there of of, of people uh, pursuing spiritual wisdom. But what I loved about the church was that all he was doing, uh, all the times I ever went, <clears throat> he would merely uh, explain where things come from. 
Mm-hmm. And that's this has been the big thing with me all my life, seeing the same thing. I'm always fascinated to see where things come from. Uh, he, Dr. Heller, and, all, and other Gnostics will do that. That's what the Gnostic Church was all about. You go and listen to a lecture, and he would explain from one week to the next some particular belief system that's in the world, where it started, who started it, how it got started, why people believed it, what did, and what did it happen, what did it do for the people who accepted it, and how did it uh, uh, operate in the world of mankind. And so you come away with a brilliant lecture on a particular religion or a particular subject or philosophy. That was the basic idea of the uh, of the. Uh, uh, Gnostic Church is just go to hear a wonderful and brilliant uh, man explaining where things come from, and he would explain Catholicism and Gnost- uh, and and the Bible and the biblical ideas and, and belief systems coming out of Christianity and Judaism and Islam and and where they came from and what they meant and why people believed it and who first and who first presented this particular idea. And uh, my God, it's not a religious uh, uh, experience as as much as it is an educational experience. I mean, you're coming and listening to someone who dissects the spiritualism of the world that you live in, where things have come from. So that's why I consider Gnosticism to be so important because it's not a religion as such. It is an explanation of all of the different belief systems in the world and how they connect what they believe and what and, and showing where they go on what foundation they were based on, who the people were that, that came up with these ideas and and you know, that is the most important thing about Gnosticism is the education one gets, not just the wonderful, uh, uh, you know, spirituality and feeling you have at the Gnostic Church, but an education that is worth, that is priceless.